Hi, this is Aaron Marshall with Rosho Christie here at UNC Wilmington. We are looking at the Kalam cosmological argument, and in this video, we're going to tell you briefly how we get premise one and premise two of the Kalam. Now, remember, premise one in the Kalam cosmological argument, everything that begins to exist, everything that had a beginning has a cause. This is Aaron Marshall. We're live at UNC Wilmington here in the Wrightsville Beach Room. We are looking, in this set of videos, at the Kalam cosmological argument for God's existence. Okay, and so in this video we're going to look at why we believe premise one and premise two are correct. Now remember the Kalam argument says this, everything that has a beginning has a cause, the universe has a beginning, therefore the universe has a cause. Now why do we believe premise one and premise two? Premise one, we believe this is the law of causality. Everything in science is essentially based on the law of causality. That's the idea that everything that has a beginning has a cause. In fact, much of what science is is the search for causes. If you could, if you, if there were things that just didn't have causes, then we would not, then science couldn't help us figure out, well, then why did those things happen? So everything that begins to exist has to have a cause. If you deny that, you deny science. In fact, if you deny that, I would ask you this question, what caused you to believe that? See, there has to be something that's causing other things to happen and other things to happen and other things to happen. So everything that begins to exist has to have a cause seems to be a, a proposition that most people are willing to accept. And most of the objections we get are not on premise one, but on premise two, okay? So the premise two says the universe had a beginning, okay? Lots of people say that, uh, lots of Christians say they don't believe in the Big Bang, okay? I do believe in the Big Bang, I just know who banged it. Uh, Greg Kokel says that, or, uh, or Frank Turk says that. Greg Kokel says the Big Bang needs a big banger. Now this is, has nothing to do with age of the earth. In, pre, in, in videos in the future, we'll talk about age of the earth, young earth, old earth. It just means that Genesis 1 seems to, believe, seems to say that there was nothing and then bang, there was everything. God spoke everything into existence. And that's exactly what the science and the philosophy seems to be showing us in regards to the fact that the universe had a beginning. Now, why would we believe the universe had a beginning? There's lots of different ways that you could look at this evidence. But let me just give you two uh, quick, uh, quick evidences. Um, the second law of thermodynamics says that the universe is running out of usable energy. Okay, if the universe is running out of usable, usable energy, and the first rule of thermodynamics says that there's a finite amount of energy in the universe, so there's a finite amount of universe, and we're running out of that usable energy, then it seems to be that the universe had to have a beginning. Why? Because if it didn't have a beginning, we would have already run out of the usable energy in the universe. Okay, so it, you can take the example of batteries. If I put two fresh batteries in a flashlight, okay, and I turn that flashlight on, at some point, the flashlight is going to run out of the usable energy, and the flashlight's going to turn off. Right? It has a finite amount of energy, it started at a particular point, and then it ran out. So the point is, the idea is, if the universe didn't have a beginning, it would have already run out of the usable energy in the universe. Because we haven't run out of, uh, out of the usable energy in the universe, because we're doing this right now, therefore we conclude that the universe did have a beginning. The other thing that seems to be the case, another way, way to get at the universe at the beginning, is that it seems that, the evidence seems to show, that the universe is expanding. Okay, now we're not expanding into something, but after the Big Bang, the everything, all time, all space, is all expanding itself. So we're not expanding into nothing, everything is expanding. The idea is, if you could stop the tape and rewind it because it's expanding out, that eventually it would come back to a point and then to nothing. So there, there's two reasons, two lines of evidence that help us to understand that the universe came into existence out of nothing. What follows from that? The universe had a beginning. So remember the Kalam, everything that begins to exist had a cause. We think there, the good evidence is that the universe began to exist, therefore the universe needs a cause. Now in the next video, we'll look at some of the standard objections you get to the Kalam cosmological argument, because let's, let's face it, people don't like the implications of this argument. But remember, at Rosho Christie at UNCW, we always ask you to ask good questions, but also seek good answers. And the question, does God exist, is a great question, but we think that there's good answers, Kalam cosmological argu argument being one of them, that point to good evidences that point to the answer, where did everything come from? is that God exists and God calls everything to come into existence. Remember, uh, at Rosho Christie at UNCW, always ask good questions, seek good answers. This is Aaron Marshall with Rosho Christie here at UNCW.